In this lesson, we're going to be graphing and looking at the functions of a mildly linear function, uh, the absolute value function. And the reason we consider this to be a mildly linear system is because it does involve straight lines, but it also has a turn in it. So we're going to begin with the parent function. We're going to build a table and draw the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of x. So let's begin with our basics. Simple table, we have our x value, then we have our f of x. And I'm going to take this from negative 3 to positive 3 in increments of 1. And then we take absolute value of these. Now, of course, absolute value is simply distance from 0. So the distance of negative 3 is 3 units. Negative 2 is 2 units, then 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if we were to take this and draw the graph, we have the following points. And we simply graph them out and then draw our trend line that we see from it, making sure to connect the points. Now as we do this, you can see it is composed primarily of straight lines with this turning point. The turning point is called the vertex. And this becomes the most important point of the function. And through the vertex there is an imaginary line that runs vertically right here which is called the axis of symmetry. And we're going to run across this again when we get into unit 4, which is on quadratic functions. So the main purpose or the main job that we have to do in order to graph these quickly is one, locate this axis of symmetry, and two, find the vertex. And then it builds out from there. Now through this lesson we're going to take a look at different ways of finding this and based on the concept of this parent function we're going to build up the entire graph and the entire system through translations. So let's take a look first at translations. We're going to build tables and write the equations of the functions that are shown here. And, well sorry, not write equations, we're going to draw the graphs. So do a small table again, x and y, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now if I substitute in negative 3 for x inside that absolute value, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, minus 4 gives me a negative 1. Negative 2, absolute value of that is 2, minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 1, absolute value is 1, minus 4 is negative 3. Then we have negative 4. Substitute in a 1, we'll get a negative 3 a negative 2, and a negative 1 again. So the table has been built. Now let's plot the points. Negative 3, negative 1 is our first one. And then negative 2, negative 2. Sorry, that first one I put a positive 1. I meant for it to be a negative. So ignore the upper point here. Uh, negative 1, negative 3. 0, negative 4. 1, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 1. And we end up with a function that splits out in these two directions. Now, you'll notice this is very similar to what we had before, and it has simply moved down four units. Now, if we think about it, this value of the negative 4 placed here on the end is a outside of our grouping symbol that we were learning in our last lesson on families of functions and anything outside is a vertical translation. Let's look at our next function. y equals the absolute value of x plus 2. So again we're going to build our table negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Oh, and 3. Ah, uh, and substituting values. 
Substitute in negative 3. We have negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. Absolute value of that is a positive 1. Substitute in a negative 2. Uh, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Absolute value is 0. Substitute in negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is a positive 1. Absolute value is 1. Substitute in a 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. Absolute value is 2. And we'll continue to substitute these values in and take their absolute values and we end up with these points. So, plotting these now, we start with negative 3, positive 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 5. Now this is rather one-sided. We can connect the right side pretty easy. Left side we do have a basic start and we come out this direction. So you can see by having this item inside of our absolute value symbol the result was a horizontal translation. And again that fits with the family of functions that absolute value, not anything inside of the group is going to work left and right. What does it take to make inside this group zero? The answer is negative two. And where is our vertex located at? It's at negative 2, 0. Now let's look to see what happens when we have both inside and outside of our function, our absolute value symbols. So we have our x and y, negative 3, all the way down. Now, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Minus 2 is 0. So we're simply following our order of operations. Next, if I say negative 2 in here, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Minus 2 is a negative 1 again. Next, substitute negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Absolute value is 0. Minus 2 gives me a negative 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. Absolute value is 1, minus 2 is a negative 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2, minus 2 gives me 0. 2, substitute in, 2 plus 1 is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3, minus 2 is 1. And lastly, substituting in a 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Absolute value of that is 4 minus 2 gives me 2. So plotting these points now, we have negative 3, 0, negative 2, negative 1, 1, uh, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, and 3, 2. And you can see we have this v-shape happening again. Reminder, or just a thought on that, absolute value, your graph will have the shape of the v from value. Now where is the vertex located on this function? And if we were to look at that, our vertex is located right here at the coordinate negative 1, negative 2. Well where does that show up in our equation? The negative 2 we can find outside here. And what does it take to make inside of our graph, inside of our absolute value become 0, and that's a value of negative 1. So negative 1, negative 2 is in our equation, and it is the vertex of our graph. Using that as perhaps a bit of a shortcut, where would we expect to find the vertex of this next function? Well, what does it take to make inside of our graph, inside of our absolute value 0? That is 2. And what is the y value outside here? And that's a positive 1. So we should expect to find our vertex at the point 2, 1. Let's graph that and see if it is accurate. x and y. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Substituting these in, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Absolute value is 5 plus 1 is 
6. We'd have negative 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Negative 1 gives me negative 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 2, absolute value is 2, plus 1 is 3. 1 gives me a negative 1. Absolute value is 1, plus 1 is 2. Now substitute in 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. Uh, absolute value is 0, plus 1 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. Absolute value is 1, plus 1 is 2. So plotting these points, we have negative 3, 6, negative 2, 5, negative 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, and then 3, 2, and you can see it's starting to rebound. So we get that to the left, and this to the right, and sure enough, our vertex is located where it was found. So we're going to be working more with this concept, but it is a faster way of being able to graph. Next, aside from translations, what are the types of transformations do we have? And that is stretch. So let's take a look primarily here at our stretch. So on each of these, I'm going to build just my y equals, or my f of x is absolute value of x, has its vertex at the origin, and moves up away from that center the same in both directions. Next, on our g of x function, what happens when we start selecting out values? So I go negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. I know this is a little bit different, but bear with me. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Half of that is 2. Substituting in negative 2, the absolute value is 2, half of that is 1. Substituting in 0, we get 0, half of that is 0. 2, substitute that in, we get 2, half of that is 1. And 4, substitute in, will give us a result of 2. So I have negative 4, 2, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, and 4, 2. And we end up with a graph that looks about like this. Now what happened? This graph you could describe as being more relaxed or more open because our a value is between 0 and 1. We have something that is less steep. You can kind of think of this as a relative slope because it is the same as slope of a linear function just we're going in both directions from that one. Uh, if you'll recall, when we were graphing linear functions, I said make sure you say up or down, and then right or left, do not say over. Because in this case, we can say we go up one and over two, because we go over in both directions when we do that. Next, let's take a look at what happens with h of x here. So, again, we go x h of x, and we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Substituting these in, negative 2, absolute value is 2, times 3 is 6. Negative 1 becomes 1 times 3 is 3. 0 is 0 times 3 is 0. 1 times 3 is 3, and 2, absolute value, times 3 is 6. So we end up with a graph that looks relatively like this, just off a quick sketch. Still has that V appearance, but it became a lot taller or skinnier. Because our A value here is greater than 1, it tightens or increases the slope. And that is what it is, it's a relative slope. Up 3 and over 1 in either direction. If we go up 6, then we go over 2 in both directions. If these a values were negative, it would simply reflect across the x-axis, and we would end up with the same functions pointed downward. Now what happens when we start to combine some of these? That's the only thing that we have left. Write the equation of the function below. 
in this function, we need to find a couple of things. We need to find the vertex, that turning point, and we need to find the relative slope. So first, where is our vertex located at? It is this point right here, which on the graph is 2, negative 1. So we'll write that down, 2, negative 1. And what is our slope? Well, from this location, I get up 1, and to the right, 4. Or up 1, and to the left, 4. So our slope is rise over run. It is 1 fourth. That helps to determine our A value. Now, does this graph open up or down? It opens up, which is positive. So we come up with a positive 1 quarter. So what would the equation look like? We have y equals our parent function is a, absolute value of x minus h, plus k, same thing we were working with last lesson. So substituting in values, we get 1 quarter of x minus h plus k. Our h value is 2, our k is a negative 1. So in the end, we come out with 1 quarter absolute value of x minus 2 uh, minus 1. So we have everything we need to put it together. We can create these, and we can write them once they've been created. Make sure you have these concepts down because we are going to be using them not only for this, the rest of this unit, but as we move into higher order functions.